If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're pretty detail oriented and you want to know about all the potential risks and complications with getting your wisdom teeth out. Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Choi with North Texas Dental Surgery. And if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're pretty detail oriented and you want to know about all the potential risks and complications with getting your wisdom teeth out. So first and foremost, I didn't make this video because I'm trying to scare everybody off because of all these potential risks and complications. Again, these are just potential risks and complications. They more than likely won't happen, but in the off percent, like 1% chance that something may happen, you wanna go into your procedure knowing about all the potential risk factors and using technology and an experienced surgeon to basically help you in regards to preventing some of these things or you know, maybe just maybe you, sh you can't get your wisdom teeth out, right? So why do you need, you know, step number one, I would say is, do you really need to get your wisdom teeth out? And so what my answer to that is really, I've done wisdom teeth extractions on 12 year olds and I've done wisdom teeth extractions up to 85 year olds. So I honestly tell people, not everybody needs to get their wisdom teeth out, but there is a pretty dang good chance that you're gonna have to get your wisdom teeth extracted at some point in your life. Well, if that's the case, then you definitely want to get your wisdom teeth removed when you're younger versus getting your wisdom teeth out anytime you're older than over 30, okay? And it's just the way because we heal and the way the wisdom teeth grow. So there are certain things that we really need to evaluate. So that's why I always say, go in for a consultation, make sure that your surgical specialist has that 3D technology to really go over all the potential risk complications and factors that may exist with getting your wisdom teeth removed. So you, may, you might ask, okay, so what are some of these surgical complications? So first and foremost, I have a list here that's on our consent form, but just to kind of go over some things that may happen, um, again, there, there being a very minute chance, but what are some potential things that could happen? So first and foremost, obviously swelling and or bruising or discomfort in the surgical area. Well, you are getting your wisdom teeth extracted. So yeah, you know, don't be surprised if you do see, do see some um, swelling and bruising. Now, again, not every case of wisdom teeth are, you know, that difficult, right? Some are pretty simple procedures um, where I've had patients that thought I was an amazing surgeon because they didn't swell or bruise. But in all honesty, although I have done probably 10,000 cases in my career, there's nothing magical about a surgical um, like technique that I have that made their experience so amazing. You know, being a teenager and getting your wisdom teeth experience, uh, removed um, and them not being horrendously impacted can lead to you having a, a much better experience without any swelling. So, um, but there's also cases where we also see teenagers that have highly impacted teeth coming in at all crazy angles with very little space in their jaws and they experience a lot of swelling. So, you know, when you talk to your surgical specialist about some of the potential complications that may arise, there's also certain things that the surgeon can do to help you prevent um, swelling, okay? So another thing that's not a consent form is possible infection requiring further treatment, right? So definitely getting, anytime you do get a wisdom, I mean, a wisdom tooth or even an other tooth extracted, you wanna keep the area as clean as possible. So your surgical specialist should go over certain things that uh, your post care uh, and your post-op instructions, so the things that you need to do to make sure that you don't get infection, not eating certain foods, for example, foods that have little seeds or stuff like that. So, so you know, just know that getting your wisdom teeth extracted, um, you need to really follow the post-op and care instructions to make sure that you don't get a possible infection. Um, dry socket, right? So dry socket, that's something that we've always heard about and the most common thing that I've heard from patients in regards to dry socket and what it really feels like, they tell me on a scale of one to 10, it's a 12 out of 10 in regards to pain experience. So we definitely don't want you to experience something like dry socket. You know, unfortunately, sometimes uh, when patients uh, do do everything that they possibly can, um, so they still can get potentially dry socket. Now, this is, you know, something that most people that are usually smokers or don't really follow their post-op like instructions, those, these are the complications that these people experience. So um, again, most commonly smokers and people who use straws and such. So again, we give you um, the post-op instructions to make sure that you don't have um, you know, dry socket. So hopefully you don't experience dry socket. So again, if you ask me what percentage of patients uh, experience dry socket, I would probably say maybe 5% of our patients. Um, again, most commonly because they're smokers. Um, possible damage to adjacent teeth, especially those with large fillings or caps. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 
if you come in with a lot of like big cavities in your mouth, then you know getting your wisdom teeth out, there is a chance that that tooth next to it might experience some damage because that tooth right next to it is coming in severely damaged. But um, a, a, a good surgeon will tell you basically and look at your, your x-rays and let you know about the risk factors that you may have of this potentially happening. Um, bleeding. So, you know, obviously after the procedure, you're going to be oozing some blood. Um, so we're going to make sure that you're obviously clot before the procedure. So um, usually when you go home, you know, patients might have some gauze in their mouth and see a little bit of blood on the gauze. You know, don't be alarmed. That's actually totally normal. So I wouldn't really say that bleeding is a potential like risk factor or a complication that's going to arise from the procedure. Um, incomplete removal of tooth fragments. So absolutely, you know, so if there are certain parts that when we look at your 3D scan, and we could see that there are certain areas that are very close to the nerve um, and your, you know, your root formation is like, you know, very curved or that what we call dilacerated and, you know, very, you know, you might have a potential surgical complication. We might leave a part of that tooth in letting you know that it wasn't the safest thing for you to do to remove that little tooth fragment right next to the, you know, the root fragment right next to the, the nerve. So, um, you know, we always t tend to tell our patients looking again at this diagnostic information about the potential risk factor for that happening. Um, possible uh, numbness or altered sensation in the teeth, lip, tongue, and chin due to the closeness of the roots, especially the wisdom teeth, to the nerves, which can be bruised or injured, right? So what are we talking about? So this is a word that we use, like, you know, nerve damage. It's called paresthesia. So what are the odds that you may experience paresthesia? So what we want, you know, there's def different, you know, different nerves going on within your, your mouth, right? So um, most you know, common, the inferior alveolar nerve, which uh, provides the sensation to the lips, the chin area, the tissues, the, the teeth, obviously. But what, that's the most common nerve that is damaged whenever removing wisdom teeth. And so again, what are the symptoms that may occur is um, basically you might feel something in your lip or chin basically where it feels a little numb, like uh, as if like the dentist just numbed you during a, when you're getting a filling. So you might experience that um, you know, kind of experience. Also, you may experience um, nerve damage um, to your, um, your, your lingual nerve, right? So that's a, a nerve that provides um, the innervation of taste. So some people might say that they can only taste on half their tongue. So if you do some research on the internet, you can actually find out about some of these potential you know, nerve damage risk factors. So the, the most important thing to avoid that is you want to go to find a surgeon that uses this 3D technology so that we can see where the nerves are and say, hey, like this is where your wisdom tooth is in like, relation to these major nerves. Also looking at undercuts to make sure that we don't damage certain structures within your mouth. But again, you want to use a surgical specialist that uses this technology because this is a game changer in regards to helping prevent nerve damage. Quick little story. I had a patient, well, a patient's mother. Um, this mother was probably like about 35 years old and she brought her teenage daughter to get her wisdom teeth extracted with me. And one day um, at the time of the surgery, we were just kind of talking and the mother who within this past year had her wisdom teeth extracted, uh, was referred to an oral surgeon for this procedure, um, ended up getting nerve damage. And what that involved was that she said that she couldn't really feel one side of her lip or her chin area. And she was even telling me a specific example where, like, where she would be applying lipstick and she couldn't feel the sensation of applying that lipstick. And so she had gone to see her, um, her oral surgeon and um, I asked her, hey, did he show you any of this, your 3D scan and where the nerve may be in relationship to um, what, you know, wh where your wisdom tooth was? And she could not recall that he had used any 3D technology. I asked her if he had used the traditional 2D scan and this is all that she remembered seeing. And so, you know, this is like something that could have been prevented in my opinion. And this patient being a nurse, she understands that um, sometimes the body is what the body is. And so you do have potential risk factors um, that your body just may be like, you might have roots that are just, you know, it, like, you know, there's, there's just no way of removing the wisdom teeth without damaging the nerve. Again, that's a very, very, very minute populate percent of the population. But, you know, this patient was just, you know, expressing to me that she would have appreciated if that surgeon had done a 3D scan on her to tell her of the likelihood of her potentially 
going to experience nerve damage before she had decided to remove her wisdom teeth. So these are some of the things that um, are potential risk complications um, with getting your wisdom teeth out. So um, again, not to scare anybody, it's good to know about what potential things may lie on the other side of getting your wisdom teeth out. Again, these like, complications are seen very, very, very few percent of the times. And if there is a, a chance that this is gonna happen, you always wanna make sure that you do find a surgical specialist who's gonna really help identify any potential risk factors and let you know to whether to proceed or not. Or, you know, again, if your wisdom teeth are causing you that much pain, you just need to, of course, go ahead with the procedure. But um, this is just a little bit of information to really help you um, understand what some of the risk factors that may happen with wisdom teeth extractions.